Hi everyone. So um, this book, Champions Number Ten, uh, got some minor controversy. <laughs> but just like when that Marvel PR girl talked about breaking the internet, and it was something from like a week earlier that everyone forgot about, this is literally like a com a controversy for like half an afternoon. Basically, uh, Mark Wade, who's a big SJW, he did the thing that just kind of happens periodically, where SJWs will just uh, randomly. Uh, turn on each other, and they'll basically eat each other. I, I do that uh, quote where they say, SJWs always lie, SJWs always project, SJWs always uh, double down, but there's another one, you know, my one, the fourth one that I've noticed is, SJWs will always turn on you. They, they have no loyalty to anyone. So Mark Wade, even though, though he's been like an SJW for like 30 years, they'll turn on him in the drop of a hat. So the reason they turned on him is because he took a kind of like a symbolic complex issue and he explored it from a couple of different stances. You're not supposed to do that. You're literally supposed to say that the, the SJW politics is literally the only correct way to respond to a situation. So we start off and we get a really good cover, um, except for one element. Um, so the composition is great. It's kind of a canted angle, um, good contrast of the colors. Uh, the bad guys actually look kind of like threatening. They're not, these aren't actually the bad guys in it. Um, um, and also the idea of any Hulk hiding from someone is a little silly, but I really like it. Hum Humberto uh, Ramos is a, I'd call him a master. Yeah. And he's been at the top of his game since like the mid nineties. I love his stuff. So it starts off and it's a little weird because this is kind of a symbolic splash page. And then it just kind of goes, like, this is typically where you'd put a title. And then you'd put, like, the credits, credits, no, credits down here. Um, but it ends up just becoming, like, a uh, portfolio piece or something like that, or, like, an alternate. Um, so then they talk about this, and one thing, they're like, in the aftermath of the second superhuman civil war, anyone notice how, <laughs> like, uh, Civil War Two is very recent, it's already kind of, been forgotten. It's like, oh yes. See, and then they're, then they're talking about Secret Empire. Uh, I did a video a while ago where I said I refuse to read or review Secret Empire. Um, this is uh, tangentially, not tangentially, this is a good tie-in. It actually does have a story. Uh, so Captain American Hydra took over the entire country overnight. Okay, whatever. Um, we get a nice establishing shot of uh, uh, New Mexico. There's a kind of an idyllic neighborhood where you see like uh inhumans and then this like uh kindly old uh mailman and then you find out that it's actually a very nice prison these two kids are plotting how to escape the mailman overhears it oh spoilers and <laughs> this whole thing's gonna be spoilers and he transforms and <laughs> like incinerates him on the spot so uh all of a sudden i was like oh i got an interesting kind of like a twilight zone story and it's got real stakes like there's there was no like discussing it with this guy it's like you mess up you're done and then um they actually do a cool thing with kamala khan uh so spoiler plot twist she's actually not in it they're referring to another uh, kamala khan now one thing i do have issue with and this has to do again with like <laughs> the the riri the project riri birth oh by the way that's still happening i've just been kind of busy like traveling, but I'm, I'm going to go through all the emails and, and give you updates on that. Anyway, so there's a Muslim woman, and uh, Muslim women have been popping up a lot in Marvel Comics, not just Kamala Khan, but just all over the place. The funny thing is, every single Muslim woman has the exact same personality. Like I talk about, they, they, they tend to make black people soulful saints. Um, uh, they all have these like uh, patient, patient, saintly victims. The weird thing is they're never with their husbands. Uh, they're always just kind of by themselves. Um, but every Muslim woman with a hijab in comics has the exact same personality. Um, I was in one of the comments. Um, uh, 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 I I don't know if she's a subscriber or what, but um, uh, somebody who was trans wrote to me and they and they referred to as. When SJWs um, take minorities and they kind of protect them and make pets out of them, she called them uh, purse puppies. She goes, I don't want to be anyone's purse puppy. Uh, 
And um, actually, no, it was, I think it was he. Uh, he said, I don't want to be anyone's purse puppy. And I was like, what a great analogy. So, um, yeah, so it's kind of like the, it's kind of like a purse puppy. It's like, oh, you know, it's just the, the, the saintly uh, victim. Um, and you know, she probably has like a staunch uh, record on uh, gay rights and everything. It's like the idealized um, SJW Western progressive idea of, of uh, the rest of the world. So um, then we get into and we get to kind of get some background. So um, the uh, champions are stationed in my old uh, stomping ground of Austin. Um, and then about half of them are missing because of Secret Empire. Nova's stuck in space. Um, they say uh, X-Men is safe with the X or Cyclops is safe with the X-Men, but they're looking for Kamala Khan um, because they're basically doing I mean, Secret Empire is just Nick Spencer's tantrum about Trump winning. So, of course, it has to be Trump wins, and then a blonde-haired white guy, Steve Rogers, gets revealed to be a Nazi and takes over the whole country with pseudo-Nazis. It's like, yeah, we get it. <laughs> we, can, we get it, Nick. You didn't, you're you not happy with the results. You don't have to monopolize an entire company because of that. Like, deal with it. Move MoveOn.org. Um, so anyway, so half the team is there and they're kind of looking for, now the funny thing is they're doing like this techno babble. I just finished, uh, seven seasons of Star Trek, the next generation. So I'm fluent in techno babble. There's a lot of holes in this techno babble. One says <laughs> she's monitoring, you know, the matrix right here. And she's like, Oh, I just saw a file, but it got deleted as soon as I saw it. It's like, what? The <laughs> what is it? A live stream? <laughs> like, um, so then, uh, I'm not sure how old Amadeus Cho is right now. Here he looks like a teen. I thought he was supposed to be like 22 or so. So anyway, um, they kind of like figure out that uh, there's these internment camps that, that are not on the map. So then we find one called Camp Echo One. And it is <laughs> like a $5 trillion uh, uh, jail for the Hulk that I don't even know if he was ever put in. It's like uh, they wanted to contain the Hulk not me, Bruce Banner, in an environment where he'd be at peace, but not a potential dang danger. So uh, they basically have all these like cyborgs who are like kind of like keep the peace, but they can, I don't know. It seems like a very, very expensive solution to the Hulk, especially when they don't really say if it was ever done. So um, they're kind of getting, they, they make it like, oh, it's like impossible to get her out of here. Oh man, it's got a wall that stopped the Hulk. And then the Hulk just runs through the wall and just starts punching people. I mean, it's kind of like you set things up really well, and then it's like, oh, okay, <laughs> yeah. And then, like, he grabs, like, a Ross <laughs> circuit board out of the uh, one of these things, and he immediately uh, reprograms it to, to uh, brute force a neural-wide shutdown. And he even says, even with my fat fingers, I should be able to. I was kind of like, eh, I'll let it slide. And then, <laughs> He just grabbed the circuit board and pressed it with these, like, four-inch-wide thumbs. Uh, but, uh, anyway, they go in, and they and it's basically an internment camp for um, uh, inhumans. So, one thing that I discovered, especially getting older, is you talk to people, and you kind of assume they know things, but maybe they're not taught as widely for younger generations. Anyway, for those people who don't know, um, during World War II, uh, there were internment camps for uh, Asian Americans and um, after Pearl Harbor. And um, the one of the most famous one was called Manzanar. There's been a couple movies about it. Um, it's kind of widely known in, in Asian American communities, but it used to be kind of common knowledge. I don't know if they uh, teach it much anymore because I said it to a couple of people and they just blinked at me. Um, so anyway, they go in it's like a Manzanar for Inhumans. And then, you know, uh, Amadeus Cho has like a, he's not Gogurt Hulk. Like he has like human reactions. I, I've really liked Amadeus Cho from this one and the Brian Edward Hill uh, story I read the other day. So then they go in and basically um, they're like, okay, well, we got to get, get him out of here. And they're like, well, the, the military's going to be here in 24 minutes. So like there's like thousands of them. What do we do? Uh, then we find out that the, the Kamala was actually a little girl dressing like Kamala Khan because she was scared and dressing up like her hero would make her brave. That's this pretty good, solid stuff. The weird thing is, at one point, they're looking for Kamala, and they think it's their Kamala. 
And then this is what Miles Morales... By the way, they just call him Spider-Man. Like, they don't... He doesn't have another name. I mean, shouldn't it be Spider-Boy? Because Peter Parker is called Spider-Man. So there's two Spider characters that are both called Spider-Man. They have effectively a very similar... I don't understand. Like that. That's one of those things where they have to do this... Replace, like, the, the white guy original. Oh, by the way, here we go right there. Um, give him a different identity, you know? Call him Arachnoid or something. But anyway, so he's looking for, um, he's looking for Kamala Khan. And Miles Morales is, uh, he's kind of like Chip Zdarsky. He's not known for a sense of humor. He's not Peter Parker. So then he's like, everyone, everybody, has anyone seen Miss Marvel? High school age, Muslim American, 5'5"-ish, five, five red and blue outfit. Okay, that's how an SJW would describe Captain Marvel. In the story, this is a, a, their friend that they are worried about. When you are worried about something and, and looking for him, you are going to give a very accurate, immediately recognizable description. So first of all, someone who actually cared about her, you would just say, uh, has anyone seen Miss Marvel? She's a teenage superhero in a red and blue outfit. She's got black hair and she's brown skinned. Like, Muslim American? I reckon the G. Willow Wilson is Muslim American. She's like, looks like my ex. <laughs> she's got like pale white skin. And she's tall. So, um, he, uh, Miles Morales went for diversity points instead of actually trying to find his friend. Um, one of the good things I liked about Miles, first of all, one thing I liked is that he's in costume the whole time. I like stuff like that. Um, the other one is that, um, he has a little temper. So I've always said my problem with Miles is he's so bland. He's basically Spider-Obama. He's very, like, bland and even-tempered. A lot of these SJW, SJW uh, characters either, and, and they tend to be, like, hyperactive pop culture, like Big Bang Theory sitcom characters, or they're just perfectly capable. They're serious and responsible. And <laughs> they don't, neither one really matches the typical Marvel hero. So, um, basically, uh, even though it's explained that the multiple sides to this situation where they basically say, hey, yeah, <laughs> we're in an internment camp, but if we run away, then we're living out in the desert and running from the authorities. Like, they're like, they're like this place is not so bad as long as you don't try to escape. They're like, it sucks. We're trying to figure out a way out, but for right now, it actually might be the best thing to stay here. Um, uh, Miles basically has a tantrum, and, um, and he goes... The funny thing is, he goes, no, I am not leaving here without a win. So <laughs> it's kind of like you see. So Amadeus, who's, he's got more skin in the game since he's Asian American. These internment camps kind of mean more to him. And he's actually kind of listening to the idea that like, hey, this is a Kobayashi Maru. This is a lose-lose situation where Miles just comes off like an SJW. He's like, no, I might, I want to win. It's not talking about like, saving people it's just talking about himself anyway what i'm saying is miles morales having some faults having an ego and a little bit of a temper i like that those are actually personality traits and they're not complementary personality traits as sjw characters tend to only get good complementary uh traits uh riri williams problem is that too many people are giving her offers like it's silly so then they basically come up with a plan and you know it's a very quick sci-fi tech speak uh, plan, but I like it. They're basically like the, the, and I actually got excited this part. So like the military, which I'm assuming is not the U S military, but it's like a bunch of Hydra guys. They're coming and look at these, look at that. This is this some good stuff. Like I was actually hearing the rotor blades. And so, um, now technically this makes no sense. Helicopters don't just look at like a paper map. Like they're following a GPS to coordinates. In this one, they basically do a hologram to hide the city, and the helicopter pilots were just like, what? Oh, it's not here. Let's go back to base. And they would just circle around, and they would search it. Um, or you'd land, and you'd, you'd have some dismounts, and, and have them go walk up and check it out. But it was like, you know what? For the average person who has the average knowledge of the military, this would not be enough to break the story. Um, for me, like, I've done air assaults and stuff like that. The idea of going to the coordinates and then shrugging, just like, whoa, the base isn't here, that's weird. Um, <laughs> like, what? So then they're kind of like, um, you know they're going to find this place eventually. They're like, yeah, we'll figure it out. And then, um, the, like, the saintly Muslim woman, she's like, oh, and I can fly. But I didn't leave, and 
we got a plan. We're trying to get out of here. So it's like, all right, cool. Now, um, this is actually a good story. It brought up something that was real. Manzanara and World War II internment. It kind of tried to put it onto the current administration, which really doesn't match at all. There's no kind of like crazy uh, nightmare scenario going in, in uh, America right now, besides me having problems with my uh, internet router. Um, but it was a good, solid story. And this is the one where the funny thing is that um, when SJWs turn on you, don't take it personal, fam, because that's what they do. They turn on you. Mark Wade will be back in their good graces tomorrow. He'll post something on Twitter saying Trump is a Nazi, and then you're back in. <laughs> but for you know, for a whole half afternoon, he was he was just, just like me. He was on the outs. But uh, this is a good story. Here's the deal: Mark Wade is a good writer, flat out. He's a good writer. Um, but he has actually care. And uh, he has to get his politics in. You know what? As, as much as I know his politics from Twitter, you know what? It really wasn't heavy-handed. He didn't do the obvious, like, oh, Steve Rogers is Trump, blah, blah, blah. It's just like, it's a story based on a... On a um, I could have seen this uh, almost exact same story being told in the 80s and 90s. It wouldn't have had the saintly, uh, perfect, mild-mannered uh, Muslim woman in hijab. It would have had something. Actually, that wasn't even like a trope back then. Probably would have been like a uh, a cool brother with like a boombox or something like that. But anyway, good story. Um, great art. Good coloring. Definitely recommend to read it. Um, I actually am... Uh, the, the last one I read was terrible. But I'm going to check out the, the first one. Not to roast it, but just hoping to uh, get some good team dynamic. Oh, as far as the team... Eh, I don't think Champions is a very good team. It, because there's no real conflict. Every, it's very millennial. Everyone likes each other and emotionally validates each other all the time. Nobody really gets um, on each other's nerves. And even when uh, Miles has a little freak out, uh, it doesn't really lead into anything. So it almost feels like this team... I mean, I, there's no, there's nothing interesting to them. And also kind of like... They don't really do much. I, there's a lot of talking and then just... They, I, they kind of felt like they were like... In Starfleet, you know what I mean? Like, he doesn't use his strength. He only uses his web crawling just to, like, walk on walls when he talks to people. She did some computer stuff that Felicity on Arrow could have done just as easily. Uh, these cops were not in it. Um, but I actually like the, uh, what was that? What was the mailman from Cheers? Anyway, kind of reminded me of that, but, like, a lot fatter. But anyway, good story, like, legitimately good. Oh, another thing. Thanks to all y'all in the comments. I'm an engineer, so I should have figured this out, doing some basic troubleshooting. But turns out my cough is literally just from, like, reviewing stuff like this and, like, having my chin on my clavicle. And they're, like, some I, a couple of people said it's, like, oh, because I said, I, like, I never cough when I'm not doing YouTube videos. And they're, like, yeah, just don't stare down, like, at your lap. That's, just, like, cutting off your windpipe. So I think I coughed a little bit at the beginning, but... I was fine. See, okay, so I don't have pneumonia, and I'm not like, uh, what was it? My my uh, son was saying I sound like Doc Holliday. <laughs> he was dying of consumption. Um, but anyway, go check it out. Champions number 10. Uh, I was going to say it's a great story. Pretty good story. Pretty good, and it's, it's definitely um, gotten me to uh, be interested in this legitimately, not just to roast it. Thanks for watching. I'll have uh, more videos up later today.